I didn't know very well Richard Kapuscinski uh, when I was asked to give this lecture. And uh, so I uh, tried to find a couple of books. And I was very interested by his book on Africa, which is really a collection of very, very short stories of uh, things he has seen in Africa uh, going over all of the continent and the uh, people uh, he talked to. And uh, I thought that this quote from uh, Kapuscinski was really a good quote to uh, start this uh, lecture, uh, describing uh, somebody, if I remember well, it is in Tanzania. Uh, he said, we are in a world in which man, crawling on the earth, tries to dig a few grains of wheat out of the mud just to survive another day. And it seems to me that at the time we are talking every uh, uh, day, every moment, everywhere about globalization, there is a kind of contradiction here. How come uh, is it still possible to observe this kind of situation? And this was done in the days uh, Kapuscinski was visiting Africa a long time ago, but you would still find uh, people in the same situation today. Today, there are 6.5 billion people in the world. But we can estimate that 1.4 billion have less than uh, the purchasing power of $1.25, which is less than one euro, to survive every day. Now, imagine what you would do with less than a euro a day. One billion people do not have access to drinking water. More than two billion people live without sanitation. And on top of this, we can estimate that every year, 11 million children die under age five, and that in developing countries, there are still 115 million school-aged children who are not going to school. So this is certainly the case, and uh, I believe that we are right in being irritated by this state of affairs and to fight against it. At the same time, we have to look at those figures in retrospect, in the dynamics. I mean, maybe there are still many poor people today, but if this, figure, if this number is declining, and declining very quickly, we, are may, we may be on the right path to get rid of poverty. You might also say, but you talk about poverty in uh, Africa, poverty in Bangladesh, in India, but there is, there is poverty in Europe. There is poverty in Slovenia. There is poverty in Germany, in, uh, in France. Yes, there is. But perhaps today, a mobile phone is a basic good. You cannot live, maybe, without a mobile phone in Slovenia or in a country in Europe. Now, you can probably very well survive in uh, uh, Africa if uh, you are lacking a mobile phone and if you have enough uh, to eat. So this is the difference. So in all what follows, I will stick on this absolute definition of poverty. Basically, there are two channels to, uh, for the evolution of poverty. One is of absolute poverty. One is the growth of the income in the population the other one is this distribution. Uh, as a thought experiment, think of a country where the income of everybody is growing at the same rate, let's say 3% every year. Then in that country, automatically, poverty will be reducing over time because every year, some people will jump over the poverty line, whether it is 1.25 or whether it is 2.5, okay? So growth per se, explains why uh, there may be a, a drop in poverty when the economy grows. But now, let's say that at the same time as growth is taking place, and for other reasons, possibly globalization, the distribution is changing. Let's say that growth is favoring the top of the distribution, but is not doing anything to the bottom of the distribution then it is possible for growth to take place. To look, if we look at the average income, it is growing uh, in the economy. If we look at GDP per capita, it is growing in the economy, but poverty is not changing, simply because growth is not reaching the poor people. 
On the contrary, you may have a positive, a progressive change in the distribution where poor people are benefiting more from growth than rich people. This is what we call pro-poor growth, in which case uh, the growth is uh, not only producing a drop in poverty, but is accelerating because of the uh, change in the distribution, the uh, poverty reduction is being accelerated. If we look at the global uh, uh, picture, we can think about three uh, channels through which policy may reduce poverty in developing countries. Development assistance, the uh, global cycles and uh, uh, the policies which are implemented by developed countries, and in particular all the barriers they can put to trade, migrations, uh, the barriers to capital flows, etc. The developed countries which are giving money to the rest of the world they are reducing their income by 0.3%. This is a figure that we have seen before. And here is what the uh, poorest countries receive, 3% of their income. Now, within those countries, if aid is really targeted towards the poorest of the poorest, maybe this is more than 3%. But this gives us an idea about how little is being done today in the world to redistribute income. When we compare this kind of redistribution at the global level with the kind of redistribution taking place at the national level in advanced countries, this is absolutely ridiculous. Poverty may fall quickly. MDGs may be made closer even in a world where growth will be slow, which I believe will be the case uh, because of the crisis in the decade uh, to come. We have learned very much about development. We have learned very much about the impact of policies, even when those policies were implemented in front of global economic shocks. Now, it is important to put that knowledge at work. It is important to increase the volume and the effectiveness. And maybe effectiveness is more important than volume of aid. It is important to improve the development coherence of development, developed countries' policies. It is not only aid, it is trade, it is accepting migrants, it is uh, uh, accepting to transfer technology instead of uh, requiring monopoly power on uh, some drugs uh, which could be used in developing countries. It is responsabilizing large economies. It is time for the Brazils, for the Chinas, uh, to move in the uh, camp of the donors uh, which will help the poorest countries in the world. They have done so, probably not enough, and maybe in an unconcerted way with the others. It is time to improve governance and development strategy design in developing countries. All this can be done. It is really an issue of political will, an issue of political will at the level of the country, political will at the global level. <laughs>